C10 Talk, episode 120. Live from SEMA, in the Magnaflow booth, I was able to sit down with David and JD for Marquee Quality Parts, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, US of A. So every one of Marquee's tools is made in Marquee from original drawings. So what we do is we take an, a, a new old stock part, so an excellent old part, we take a mule, a vehicle of that vintage that's perfect, no paint, no body work, no dents, no dings, and we take the original drawings, and from all three of those, we produce a brand new part that was made in the heartland. And that's just magical. It really is. Uh, there's something about that that gets under your skin. Damn, son. Welcome to C10 Talk, your C10 truck podcast. Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. All right, all right. What up, what up? Episode 120, a little live from SEMA. A big shout out and thanks to uh, Shout Engine Chris, who puts it all together for us, and Magnaflow at their booth. They set up the podcast. We would not, could not make this happen if it wasn't for them giving us the venue to sit down with people like David and JD, and uh, we had the Ring Brothers, and then we will also have Andrew from Painless Wiring as well later this month. Hopefully you guys are digging the Get Down episode. That was fun to get out and about. Uh, you can kind of see if you weren't able to make it out through social media and whatnot that the the love, the uh, admiration, that the love and the response from that show has been nothing but uh, killer, kick ass, and a lot of fun because uh, we did have a lot of fun and uh, everything went without a hitch. So Get Down 2018 was a success check out the episode and then right before that i did drop the ring brothers so you've got some content there as you're cruising around post thanksgiving getting ready for shopping christmas and everything that goes on i hope you guys all had a great thanksgiving and uh just just honored to uh you know to be doing what we're doing and i'm sitting here thankful for you the c10 nation and c10 talk so again thank you for taking time to listen thank you for taking time to share the podcast Please rate and review us if you can. If you don't know how to do that, shoot me an email, Ronnie at C10 Talk, Ronnie at C10 Talk, and uh, I'll get you the link on how to do that. I've got a little email I can send you. It kind of walks you through it. I've had a few guys reach out to me uh, because I am trying to get to 400. I always kind of set that little goal. Look at it. Where are we at? We got you know pretty much December. Can we make it to 400 by the end of the year? So kind of a call to action to you if you're listening. If you like the show, if you love the show, give me a rate, give me a review, and let me know. And if you don't know how to do it, shoot me an email, again, ronnie at c10talk, and uh, we'll make it happen. Speaking of shopping, thank you so much for all that uh, just hit it hard. Uh, my wife, who handles a lot of our shipping and receiving and uh, pretty much majority of all that has been uh, kicking butt. So she's been working her butt off because you guys all ordered a ton of stuff. So uh, thank you for taking advantage of our Black Friday special, which I guess essentially went through Monday. And I think it actually even kind of rolled over to Tuesday because we didn't change some of the uh, merchandise because you can do a code, which will take like a 10 or 20% off, but we have different markdowns. Some stuff was 10%. Some stuff was all the way to 60. Now I don't know. I'll probably have maybe one or two more little specials or something. I was thinking the banners are really popular. So the way the banners work, you guys, I, I don't know if everybody gets a kind of a concept of this, but you get a pretty large garage shop wall banner. And if you send your truck, we can match the color of either what you have now or what you would want. So you look at all of our stickers, look at all the eras that we carry. And for the most part, we have the Blazers, we have the Dooleys, we have really just about everything. The only thing we haven't really done is a four-wheel drive with our little sticker combo kit that we do make or sell. It's uh, cool to see some guys order in that little four-wheel drive sticker addition that you can make the bagged, lowered bumper decals that we do or tailgate decals you can make a, a four-wheel drive off-road one because everybody was like hey ronnie you make all these slam stickers let's make some you know off the ground four-wheel drive stuff 
So we sell a little sticker and uh, you add that and you can make yourself look like you're on 38s practically. At least, at least a nice six inch lift on your K5, on your truck, whatever it might be. So we, we should be able to do a banner like that as well. So if you've got a truck, you've got a tailgate, you've got a color you want, we can make that color based upon the picture you send us. So whatever your truck is, whatever you, you would want it to be, think about that and maybe let your loved one know because that's a really cool gift you get the banner for your man cave, your garage, your shop, whatever it is. And it might be motivation. It might be something where the truck's not done. This is what I want it to look like. And uh, it might inspire you to, to get it there sooner than later. But uh, we had a special on those banners. That's going to come off special. I might run one more on those banners. I'm not sure. That's actually a lot of work. My wife does all the kind of banner work on that. But Nonetheless, those banners are cool. Thank you for taking advantage of our specials that we did run. Think about those cool leather keychains. I'm out of a few of them because, like I said, once they sold out, they sold out. So I've got a few eras still left. Those are make, you know, fun little stocking stuff or something you might ask for. And then the coffee cups, tons of hats and still got some pretty rad shirts. So thank you guys so much for doing that. If you're interested, uh, c10nation.com, pretty easy. The only other thing I want from you guys is I'm thinking about doing a little contest. I'll give away some swag, a shirt, a hat, a coffee cup, a keychain, whatever. And uh, I'd like to hear from you. I haven't established the rules yet, but uh, let us um, let me come up with some stuff. Follow us along on social media. I'd like to see what your favorite episode of 2018 is and would be. So best episode 2018 we started with Stacy David at the very beginning, which is crazy. That's been almost a year. And uh, I'll let you pick one. And you pick, and then we'll shuffle it up or whatever it might be. And I'd like to kind of do a poll on that. Maybe I can do something like that on my uh, website. So think about that. So the month of December, I would like to do best of 2018 and see what comes in as like top one, two, and three, and kind of go from there. And you'll get... Uh, you know, a sticker or something for participating. A little format change for 2019. I've been working on some stuff and uh, we got some changes coming to you. So a little bit the way we format the show, something where we've kind of just had the format that I currently have pretty easy. I'd like to change it up. I'd like to change up the way we kind of bring the sponsors to you. Maybe a little bit better for them, a little bit better for you. Uh, some more contests, uh, which means more winning and more stuff that you're going to receive. So our first episode of 2019, I'm not sure exactly who it's going to be. I definitely have Metal Ox, which is Kyle Oxberger on the uh, on the docket. And then Solomon, who I met at the Get Down. Well, I met him at SEMA and the Get Down. He's the big Ford guy. We kind of had some fun debate at the Get Down, so I'd like to get him on as well. So tons of rad trucks out there, tons of rad dudes, no shortage for uh, guys for us to interview and uh, I need to break it all down, but 2019 expect a little bit of a change and, and I need to, you know, work hard on that in, uh, in December. So have a great week. I will be back with one more episode for 2019, which is going to be Andrew from painless. And, uh, then we'll take you all the way home to 2019. So hope you guys had a good Turkey day. Hope the shopping's not too crazy out there. Have a great week. Look for Andrew to probably drop, I don't know, I'm going to go second week of December. We'll see how we how we look there, keep you guys going fresh, something to listen to. Hopefully you're getting caught up. Again, remember to share the pod, love the pod, rate, review, and uh, stay out of trouble. All right, guys. Late. Hey, hold on. Not just yet. We were able to get the voting for the top episode of 2018 up on our website. So c10nation.com. Right on the homepage, you get to pick through all the top shows, pick, vote, and let us know what you think. And we're going to select the top show of 2018. Thanks for your time. Check it out, c10nation.com. All right, late. All right, all right, C10 Nation. A little uh, SEMA episode, SEMA 18, SEMA coverage, and um, kind of refresh your memory a little bit. Back in 17, Magnaflow, I want to give huge props to Magnaflow and uh, allowing us to come into their booth. They've got podcasts set up. Now, they do have an active uh, podcast going on the main stage. We, uh, we're in the back here. We're getting warmed up. 
but uh, we're kind of in the uh, the backstage booth and uh, they've set up two because it's so popular so again I want to give huge uh, props out to those guys for, for letting that happen now when they said they were going to do it, I was uh, able to get some uh, people on board and uh, lucky enough to have Marque. We've got David and we've got JD here today. Pretty big deal this morning at 10 o'clock for you guys. It's something we talked about on the Square Body Syndicate, the SSO2. Um, we're going to talk to them about Marque. We're probably going to talk a little bit about some history, some bedwood, and everything that they have going on. And primarily we want to really hit the square body uh, side trim that you guys are coming out with so welcome to c10 talk thanks for taking time out of your hectic SEMA schedule and sitting down with the c10 nation and uh, let's just have fun and chat it up yeah man thanks so much for having us really appreciate uh, you taking your time out and you know we love working with you guys and you know working with all these guys in the industry like yourself like yezzy um you know to me that's what it's about right so i'll tell you a quick story this morning um you know Jason from uh, Fat Vendor. From Fat Vendor Garage. Yep, yep. Yeah. So he calls me and he's like, "Man, we uh, we got your tailgate latch on the truck and I forgot a piece." He's like, uh, "So this is yesterday." And I'm like, "Okay." So, and it's like six or no, about five o'clock at home, you know. So I call the office and they get a hold of David. David hadn't come out yet. Um, he's the owner of the company, and uh, he throws some stuff in his suitcase and brings it out. <clears throat> and um, so then. So I got that covered, right? We got that figured out. Then we're trying to figure out with this particular bracket, you've got to, uh, to uh, drill a hole in it once you get your pins located for the tailgate. So now I'm going, oh, how am I going to come up with a drill, the correct size drill bits and everything else? Because, I mean, I know a lot of guys here, and you may have hand tools, but nobody's going to have a, you know, not most people are going to have a drill and drill bits. So then I called some guys from Premier Street Rods. They were still in Havasu. They loaded, they went back to their shop from their house. They were loaded up, ready to leave got a drill, got drill bits, brought it out to us this morning, realized we didn't have any Allens. I went to Billet Specialties, got some Allen wrenches, and we came over and we, we put these brackets on, on Jason's truck in the show. He had the tailgate on his truck taped shut because he had forgot these brackets. And, you know, we're all standing there. The owner of the truck standing there. You got a couple hundred thousand dollar truck. You got all this stuff going on. And, it, you know, you take that step back and you're like, this is what it's about. This is why when my dad started building cars 55 years ago, he always told me car guys are great guys. For the most part, car guys are, are the be, are the salt of the earth. And and this is what it's about. I mean, I'm getting parts and tools and stuff from, you know, three or four different people. And, you know, we're getting this done. And, you know, I, I have to say that I think this is probably one of the only industries that that would happen in. Because most people would be like, you know, Premier Street Rod's going, well, that's not my truck. I didn't build that truck. No. You know, they saw that somebody needed some help and were happy to help. You know, and, and that's... That's the fun part of SEMA to me. The hectic part, the trying to get here, the getting the booth set up, the thrashing on your truck all night, all that is is a kind of a part of the process. But when you get here and, and I run into you, you know, we live 1,200 miles away and we're hugging and talking and everybody's, you know, it, it's, it truly is like a brotherhood. And, and that's why I love doing this stuff. You know, that that's the fun part. Well, and you bring up a great point and it's so nice to have David here to talk about this. I was just talking to him from perspective of when I got into the podcasting, how I was really looking at the homegrown companies. And you think about the, like you said, the car guys. And what it is, is it was a car guy in his garage and the tooling, and that's where Mark K comes from. And one thing we, you know, joke about or you talk about now is uh, you hear, you know, Trump, the tariffs, you know, we got to ship stuff in, we got to tax it. Guess what, people? That doesn't have to happen with Marquet because it's made right here, Oklahoma. It's a mom and pop garage style company. And uh, how many people do you guys even employ right now? Yeah, we've got about 30 people right now, full time. We've got some part time people too. But yeah, Mark Sharp, the founder of the company, was actually a NASA engineer. And then he was an engineer for Texas Instruments. And he's got patents. There's that lively SEMA we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, party. We're, this is a lively show. <laughs> That's right. And uh, so he was a, a guy that held multiple patents. He designed the equipment to make the integrated computer chip for Texas Instruments way back when. And uh, so he was a successful engineer, and he drove a Corvette. And so he was a part of the Corvette Club. And guys in the Corvette Club would come to him, and they'd say, man, I can't find this part for my Corvette. I can't find this trim. I can't find this grill piece. They just don't make them. And, uh, or they make them and I can't get them. And so Mark literally went out in his garage, being an engineer, and designed the tooling in his garage to make these pieces for Corvettes. 
And then he just kind of offered them to his friends and said, yeah, here you go. And then word spread. Hey, Mark, will make these pieces for you. Hey, and what's funny about that is, so I told my dad, we were, we were talking one day, and I was like, yeah, you know, Mark Sharp. He goes, oh, I know Mark Sharp. My dad built a lot of 58, 62 Corvettes as well. And uh, my dad was like, he, he used to build jacks for us. So he would, my dad came up with a design, brought him like a new old stock jack, because I guess you couldn't find the jacks for him. And so my dad actually had Mark build the jacks. And then he had another buddy that had Mark build a grill for him. And then Mark started building the grills. So, you know, around Oklahoma City in the car scene, tons of people knew who Mark was. I mean, you know, he, he was a kind of a legend in his own right as far as the manufacturing side. Um, well, and, most, and a lot of people don't realize what a huge car scene Oklahoma has. People think Oklahoma's a flyover state. Why would anybody go to Oklahoma? Well, I mean, different things bring people to Oklahoma, but one thing's for sure, once they're in Oklahoma, they're into cars. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, the 405 is, is huge right now because of Street Outlaws and other TV shows, but, you know, cars in Oklahoma have always been a really big deal. Maybe it's because there's not much scenery. And yeah, so <laughs> there's just not a lot to do. I don't know. You know, I don't know what it is, but Oklahoma just has a huge car scene. And so, yeah, Mark was one of these guys back in 1975 that decided to to hang up his uh, his jacket, his coat in the office, and uh, make Corvette parts. He started in his garage, and he employed his wife and kids. So his kids were his employees, and they made these Corvette parts. And it didn't take them long before they couldn't fit everything in the garage. They just outgrew the garage. And so he rented a little industrial space, just a little, another garage is bigger, and uh, expanded and expanded. And we're in building number four now, and um, you know, much bigger facility. But you know what? It's really cool. In our shop, we can walk out there, and in the tooling rack is the very first tool Mark ever made to make Corvette trim, and we still use that tool to make that same piece to this very day. Yeah. Now that's cool. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that's. I thought. I literally thought you were going to tell me it was like sitting on a, uh, like a, a shelf that's got a little plaque and a little bronze thing that said Mark's first no, tool. Heck no, heck you'd, you'd have to know. You'd have to know Mark. You'd no, have to know Mark no. that it's still working. <laughs> that's right. And not only is it still working, Mark is still working. So Mark is still out there. He still designs tooling. He's still an incredible, brilliant engineer. He sold the company and all the related uh, businesses to me, but I hired him right back. Yeah. And I said, you're an important part of this. And uh, he is fantastic, the nicest guy. And it's like JD's talking about. I mean, we have such a great crew. And that's something that um, is hard to put a value on. We've got these guys that work hard to produce the highest quality components, over 6,000 components for cars and trucks. And these guys really care about what they do. As a matter of fact, they'll bring issues to me and they'll say, hey, this uh, bedside, you know, we just, it's got this little tiny problem. It's got this little thing that we don't like, and we don't think we should sell it. And I'll, I'll be like, you know, nobody's ever going to see that. I mean, it's just like, it's like nothing. And they're like, no, it's not perfect. Yeah. We want them to yeah. be absolutely perfect. And that, that level of um, uh, just control. energy and the, the, that level of caring, you know, you can't put a value on that. Uh, you can give guys great tooling and great equipment, and if they don't care, they're going to make junk. Yeah, you know, but Aaron Kaufman said, you know, make it your craft. And I mean, he didn't come up with it by any means. Mark obviously made it his craft. Right. And then Mark employed people that he knew would make it their craft. And now you have those people. And um, it's amazing because I feel like I don't know. I feel like I hope. But Americana, again, is making a shift. You know, maybe it won't last a generation, meaning. Uh, last probably isn't the right word. It won't. It'll take. It's going to take a cycle or two for generational. But but we're bringing things back home. And and you look at the mom and pop style shops. And you look at the people that are, the tooling, the craftsmanship, the quality. And that's when you have that. And like you said, you bring Mark back. It's probably one of the best moves you could make. It shows you're a smart businessman. And it shows though that you care because you you look at what was built. Now, one thing you said was six thousand different pieces, six thousand parts. How do you go from a few Corvette parts to six thousand pieces? Well, I'll tell you what's really amazing is every single tool that we use to manufacture in Marque was also made in Marque in our tool and die shop. So we don't have any tools that were made anywhere else. So there's other places in the world where they'll buy old tooling. And then they'll run that old tooling. So after Ford has maybe made, you know, two or three million tailgates, 
that old tool then will get sold and then somebody will run that tool. The problem is after a tool has made a couple million tailgates, it's worn out. And the, the tailgate's all out of spec because the tool is designed to run a certain number of tailgates. Sure. So, you know, for GM, they're not going to put more money into a tool. They're going to design a tool for a production run, and they're really just throwing it away afterwards. They're not counting on getting anything out of that. Um, so really early on, Mark decided in order to make the very best products in the world, he couldn't buy old tools. He would have to engineer and design brand new tools for everything. So every one of Marquet's tools is made in Marquet from original drawings. So what we do is we take an, a, a new old stock part, so an excellent old part. We take a mule, a vehicle of that vintage that's perfect, no paint, no body work, no dents, no dings, and we take the original drawings. And from all three of those, we produce a brand new part. And that part is like the very first part that came off the production line from that series. Crisp, sharp, and perfect. I mean, anybody that's worked on old cars knows some of the parts, even the new old stock stuff, it's not very good, depending on when it was run and who ran it and where they ran it. The other thing we do, and this appeals to the young people we hire, because we hire all the time. We have turnover. We have guys retired. We have to hire young people. They see this, like you said, Americana. They see this craftsmanship. They see not only are we making all this tooling and designing all these parts, we have three full-time engineers. So we're doing all this design work. They also see American steel come in our back door. So we order 100% American raw materials from U.S. mills. And when, the, when, that, when that sheet or that coil comes in, it's all labeled, you know, U.S. stuff. So you got young people seeing with their own eyes these guys designing. Uh, we bring in American raw materials. Then they get to apply their craft to it. They get to apply their labor. And they see this beautiful, high-quality part that was made in the heartland. And that's just magical, it really is. Uh, there's something about that that gets under your skin. And I think they probably just like, I mean, kind of growing up as a kid, <clears throat> as a teenager I did roofing and concrete. I could, my wife probably gets tired of hearing it, but if I go by a building that we worked on, I tell yeah. her, and she's yeah. like, I already know you worked on that building, I already know you roofed that building, I already know you did the sidewalk there. And it's that, that pride you know, that pride that you did something with your back, your hands, and to think that these young kids uh, that you're, you're probably, you know, range in age, mm -hmm. they go home and know that they built something um, that was prideful, that was made in America by American-made products. And really, in the, to kind of parlay that into the truck industry or the automotive aftermarket industry, we are C10 Talk, but we have a lot of listeners who listen to or that build other vehicles obviously Impalas, Chevys, Fords, whatever it might be, there's a lot of crap out there, okay? There's a lot of, the one thing that really got me, and, and, and you guys were over there at the booth earlier, and you had a sample of your new square body trim. And the second I grabbed that trim, now I've got, uh, just at home, I mean, I could go through the whole plethora of trucks that I have, but I've got some square bodies and I've got some square body trims. I've got some 68 trim, I've got some 71, 72 trim. The gauge, the quality, the heaviness that you know when you touch it all. I mean, as a truck guy, a guy who's pulled it, pushed it on, you know, we've worked through that. That right there, when you get your packaging, when you get your products, you guys, I wouldn't be wanting these guys to come in here and talk about this stuff and deliver this stuff to you. Even though we're talking about product, it's about the experience, it's about the journey, it's about what's behind it. We were talking about the old forum days and you could talk to guys about, well, did that fit? Well, did that work? And then you get guys, that some, cause some of the stories, you're like, okay, I bought, I bought a master cylinder from AutoZone, Napa, O'Reilly's, and, you know, uh, obviously checkers O'Reilly, so some uh, pet boys. And then they go through it and they're like, hey, this this works best with this seal and this works best with this seal and this is what I got to work out and that trial and error yeah. and that and that and uh, just that experience. Well, that's that's part of that whole thing you talked about with the guys and they're like, hey, this isn't right, we need this to be right because at the end of the day, it's, it's about your time and the right component and the right product on your build and Marque, and the 6,000 different components you guys create, produce here in America, 
are obviously going to be the right equipment and save the builder so much time when they don't have to ship parts back, ship trim back, ship different things, deal with getting... For you guys at home, when you're building a truck, I have a, a melt crate is what I try to keep because I know that there's going to be returns and I have a melt crate that says returns and I have to try to keep it organized somehow because I already know that I'm going to have returns, at least I expect it. And with quality products that you know you don't have to return, there's a lot of time that's in there on the installment, on me trying to figure out how to ship it back, on me to take it back to Napa or whatever it might be. And that's it's just all part of that journey when you're building something with your hands and you're working in your shop on your build. Well, you know, the one thing is, I'll stop you there, Ronnie. Uh, we did have a return uh, last year. I just want to stop and tell you about that. Uh, we had one piece of bedwood returned last year out of the roughly 25,000 that we sent out. So um, we did have a return in last year. What so. was wrong with it? Uh, I don't remember. One piece. I don't you should Maybe frame that. Wrong you should frame that. Yeah. yeah, frame that. This was the one piece. You, got, you know how you see those accident report things? Like we haven't had an accident report in 436 days. Yeah. This should be the one like, you guys suck. We had one piece brought yeah. back. Yeah. This was the one piece you guys brought back. Zero tolerance. We're not going to. David's up there talking about it, cracking <laughs> yeah. the whip. You guys are going to get the stick. I'm going to make wooden spoons out of this piece of bedwood. <laughs> I'm going to beat all your asses. Well, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a good point. You know, bedwood is something we really take pride in. Mark Hay is one of the original bedwood suppliers for the classic truck market. And uh, most people that produce bedwood now, the dirty secret is they actually just bought Mark Hay bedwood kits and tried to copy them. Because or, or resell them, or rebrand resell them. them. Yeah. They take our kit, take our sticker off, put their sticker on and call it theirs. But uh, So we're one of the originals and uh, all of our patterns are original patterns just like we talked about before. But then the process that we go through for the wood itself, again, you have to start with the very best raw materials. So we start with, you know, triple A furniture grade, perfect wood with zero defects. That in and of itself is a really tall order nowadays because wood, wood is tough to get the best quality in. So um, we've got competitors that when they uh, source wood, they buy pallets of wood and they sort through it to try to find decent pieces to ship to people. Um, we don't do that. When we get a pallet of wood, every single stick is perfect. We don't have to throw any away because that's the wood that we buy to begin with. Well, and I mean, I'm in the middle of a house remodel. I know JD does some construction work. I, I could tell the audience, if you haven't been to Home Depot or Lowe's lately, yeah, when I go in there, I, whenever I'm buying, I, I know exactly. I've taught my son. Here's how you do it. You go to the lumber pile, let's just use two by fours for example. You hold it up, you tilt it, you look at front, you look at back, how long is it, how much bows, where's the knots. I mean, that, I know that I'm gonna go through 20 to get four. Right. And you're saying, we don't have to do that. No, because we start with the very best raw material. And then our process has been perfected over many, many, many years to where our bed wood fits perfectly. And that's a matter of tolerances, because bedwood, it grows and shrinks depending on temperature and humidity. So there's a tolerance there. That bedwood can't be tight or the, or the boards will bow, all right? And if it's too loose, of course, that's obvious. You got all these, you know, these open play. slots. Yeah, you got all this play, it's loose. So the, from the strip and the way the strip interacts with the, with the bedwood, how it grips it, um, to the bedwood itself, to the tolerances for the trucks, all the different years, the series, the makes, long bed, short bed, you know, all that stuff has been figured out over many, many years. And we're going to deliver that beautiful, incredible bedwood set to you quickly. So that's the other thing. You, know, you order from Mark Hay, you're not going to wait and wait and wait and wait and say, hey, where's my bedwood? Because we're going to go out there and we're going to run your bedwood and ship it to you. <laughs> it's going to happen. And, yeah. uh, you know, and even if it's an exotic, so we've got lots of exotics. We've got pretty much anything you'd want. And uh, somebody wants walnut. Walnut's beautiful. You know, we're going to ship that walnut quickly. We actually stock walnut and a lot of the other real popular exotics. So the combination of those things, you know, and then the guy making bedwood, man, he loves what he does. He's a happy guy. He's working with this perfect, beautiful wood, and he loves the wood. You know, he'll tell you all about it. And, uh, and he's producing an incredible product. So... When I see our bedwood all over the show here, um, you know, this show is full of, of Marquet bedwood, and uh, it's gorgeous. It really is. Well, and when he knows he doesn't have, you know, any returns, he has the highest wood 
that uh, is coming in, uh, it takes a lot of that second guessing, that mindful, even from a Stress, uh, yeah. from a, a customer service perspective. You're like, listen, we rock it out, and we work really hard at it. If you're not satisfied, just let us know. We have plenty of really good stuff, and we'll we'll send it to you. That's well, what we do. We're, I, we're confident in our product. I know for certain we're the, we're the only company that has designed and engineered both the bed wood and the bed strip, which both work together in the bed. Everybody else, you know, they might uh, cut out some bed wood. Um, probably using our stuff, copied our stuff, but I guarantee you they don't make the bed strips too. And that bed wood and bed strip works together. So if I could, if I had a drawing, I could show you exactly how it works. But it's really cool. The engineers a long time ago that designed bed wood for pickup trucks knew what they were doing, and uh, it's really neat how it works. Other companies don't ha- can't offer that. Well, and when you say that, just to try to put it into a visual, um, of course, we have some cold water shrinkage that you might have to think about. But ultimately, you've got the gapping for the audience. You've got your piece of wood laid down. You have um, whatever that level quarter inch, we'll call it whatever it is, and that that bedwood strip can handle that flex and that. And you need to have that handle. It, to me, it's like fo- floating a floor. I'm going to keep that floor a quarter to three-eighths of an inch from my wall because weather, moisture, everything else is going to allow that wood to grow, expand, shrink with temperature, heat in Arizona, uh, Oklahoma, and that's all hidden under a 5 8 piece of base trim. So the way that we, you guys think about it, for the audience and, and you putting it into your bed, it flexes, it moves, mm-hmm. it's hot. You've got it out in the sun. You leave it in the garage, it's nice and cool. You take it out for the weekend, you want to take it down to the you know good guys show, you want to take it home to you know C10 Nationals, well then you leave it out in the sun all damn day. It's no different than you. It's gonna change. You're gonna be at home, you're freezing, you're cold, your hands are all you know shrunk up and then sometimes you're outside and you're like, man, I, I'm, I feel like I'm bloated, I'm swolled up today. Mm-hmm. Well yeah, your hands are hanging down, you're, you know, you're drinking a lot of water, out in the sun bedwood's going to do the same thing and expand and you know again that when you have the best and it's cut i think the big thing for me is i've seen people have shitty bed wood and it and it bows and it moves and that's got to give somewhere and yeah. it's going to be pushing on your your you know your inner fender wells there's so many different things to go bed wood could probably be a, an hour-long topic and you're like all right with the bed wood but <laughs> bottom line is for the audience c10 nation if you guys want the best bed wood and you don't want to i think the thing is is just consider your bang for your buck okay mm-hmm. it's not like oh well i'm saving best price is not best does not mean best deal Okay. Sure. So, and, so factor that in there. Yeah. Anybody could go to the lumber yard, buy some planks, and start carving out some bedwooding. And guys do that all the time. And my hat's off to them. You know, you know, it's a free country. Do whatever you want. You know, for crying out loud. But if you want the very best bedwood in the world, you know, get it from Marque. It's going to fit right. It's going to last. It's going to be beautiful. And um, years from now, you won't regret it. One of the things that makes a, an American classic truck unique is it's got wood in the bed. You know, what else has wood in the bed? Think yeah. about it for a minute. That's a distinctive feature of an American classic truck. And when I talk to people, one of the first things they look at in any truck build is the bed. They go around looking at the bed. <laughs> a lot of real estate back there. That's right. A lot of real estate and, back uh, there. And, you know, and so guys have gotten really creative about stains and finishes and colors, but it all starts with great wood. Cool. And the bed strips. So now you guys do... Um, bed wood, you do bed sides, you do tailgates, you do, I mean, when you talk about those 6,000 parts, obviously all the hardware that goes with that, all, you know, in-house, and then really, I think JD and I have talked about it quite a bit, but you're known for all your molding. I mean, that's really what you guys are known for. Yeah, so um, you're right. Yeah, so take we've us got, through that. We've got, we say, build your bed with Marque. So we kind of got it, we got everything, everything you need to build your bed. So from the cross supports, you know, to the bed wood, the bed strips, the bedsides, the tailgates, and, you know, lots of versions and all of those. So you can buy it all um, like restoration pieces, just like it would have been from the factory. But we have lots of upgrades, lots of modifications that most people want. So, you know, if you want uh, hidden latches and hidden links to get rid of those chains that bang around back there and strip the paint off the back of your truck, uh, we've got that. Now we've even got a push button tailgate that right inside the tailgate, it's got a cool little push button that releases two little bear claw latches uh, for your tailgate. Um, we can raise your bed. So if you're dropping your truck, you gotta have room for the pumpkin, right? It's Halloween tomorrow, so we gotta talk about the pumpkin. So, uh, you know, that's the differential. So if, you're, if you lower your truck, where's that differential go? Well, it comes up. So we can, we can design you a bed that's got a raised bed engineered into it with all the right supports, all the right cross sills, 
that you literally drop the bolts into it and you've got a raised bed all finished, everything works. That's something that somebody would have spent you know, many, many hours fabricating uh, just a year ago before we came out with that product. I think we're the only ones making that too. Um, so we've got lots of options for you. So if you want just OEM stock, great. Or we've got lots of upgrades. And again, it's all gonna be made right in Oklahoma City, uh, out of US materials to the very highest quality standard. Uh, we just don't get complaints about quality and fit and finish, do we, JG? No. That's what led us to doing the square body molding, right? Classic Performance Products, CPP, has a few new products out. Let's start with their new Hydrostop Street Beast Hydraulic Assist Systems. CPP's Hydrostop Street Beast is a direct fit, high performance hydraulic brake assist system that works great when running a performance engine setup and there is not enough vacuum produced to operate a traditional booster. Simply plumb in your power steering system and share the fluid reservoir with your power steering pump to your high performance brake system. Assembled with all new parts, this unit puts out an amazing 1800 PSI at the wheels. How about their new 14 inch big brake kits? CPP now offers a six piston, 14 inch big brake system for your Chevy truck, featuring two piece pre-assembled drilled, slotted and zinc coated rotors, six piston billet aluminum calipers with DOT compliant dust and weather seals premium stainless hardware, and braided stainless brake hoses. These brakes work with their modular and Corvette style spindles. Remember, use C10 Talk at checkout and save 10% off your order. Damn, son, 10%? www.classicperform.com Hey guys, I've been buying my truck parts from brotherstrucks.com for over 20 years now. These guys just aren't selling parts. They build trucks. They have their own trucks. They attend shows. They're part of our community. I saw Jim Flanders at C10s in the park in Texas and also at Dino's Get Down out here in Arizona. And that's why I continue to buy my parts from Brothers. One thing I remember Jim Flanders saying when I interviewed him for the podcast, when we buy parts, we buy the best parts possible so that you, the consumer, will get the best parts possible. Sure, they have the opportunity to buy a lesser made, lesser quality part, but they know that it's going to you, the C10 Nation. So when you buy your parts from brotherstrucks.com, rest assured, you're getting the best part possible. So when you're looking to restore your 1947 through 87 Chevy or GMC truck, go to brotherstrucks.com. That's brotherstrucks.com. That's what led us to doing the square body molding, right? So we've had, <clears throat> I've had a bunch of square body trucks. I know Ronnie's had a bunch of square body trucks. Um, and you know, it, if you've ever tried to put the molding on, we know how it is. We know, you know, it's the, even the factory stuff. So this is what kind of a, a conversation that I had with Yezzy is, um, you know, it, it, you've been to Yezzy's. He's got a million pieces of new old stock trim. Well, none of it matches. The anodizing is different. The color is different. This is different. That's different because it was all made in different places. Well, then you try to start using the aftermarket stuff. And I don't care if it's factory or aftermarket. You start trying to push the clips in, and you will bend the trim every time, no matter how careful you are. So, um, you know, we had actually met David three years ago. A lot of people don't even know this, but I, I don't work for Marque full time. Um, I work, I'm a home builder. So, you know, a, a lot of guys are like, well, why do you work for Marque, you know? And, uh, and the... The reason we're cool, is, that's why. Yeah, that's were, were they clapping awesome. for you? Were they clapping yeah, for you? they were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> home builder. They're lively. Yeah. So, uh, so anyways, I met David out in front of uh, the ac in the Acura Corral, and uh, Lewis Milnick built that little blue seventy one seventy two pickup. Yeah. And we were sitting there looking at it, and uh, David had this same obnoxious orange Marque shirt on that you could not yeah. miss. Yeah. And uh, it's a one man repping machine right there. That's right. Yeah. Everybody else has got a black t shirt on. Yeah. I'm not wearing a black t shirt. I like yeah. orange. I'm yeah. a big fan of Bright orange. Bright orange. This is like yeah. this is like construction cone orange. Yeah. That is. You see that pylon? Yeah. yeah. I can nice. direct I can direct traffic in the middle of the strip in Vegas with this shirt. If on. you guys want to go hunting tomorrow and you got your safety orange, <laughs> take right. Mark K. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> so uh, we're sitting up there talking and uh, I was like, Oh, I know the guys from Mark K. Uh, what do you guys do? And of course David's like, Yeah, I'm the owner and I'm like, No, you're not. Mark owns it. And he's like, well, I bought the company for Mark and we got to talking. And uh, one thing that I wanted to do was build a custom piece of trim and I won't get into all that. And I'd asked Mark to do it several times and Mark builds a, a phenomenal product. But boy, once he, once they get it lined up, he wasn't big into modifications because of the tooling. It takes a lot of time, which I understand. And so David goes, I'll tell you what, I'll make you that piece of molding. 
And I'm like, you're kidding me. I've been asking Mark for five years to build me this piece of molding. Yeah. So, um, so long story short, you know, we kind of And it was love talking. right there. That's yeah, right. That was I it. looked that into was his it. eyes. He looked into my yeah, eyes. You're like, dude, I want an orange shirt now. <laughs> yeah. So he actually took his shirt off and gave it to me. It was, it was awkward. but <laughs> Not in, It wasn't awkward in Vegas. Yeah. yeah. It worked here. So he's the type of guy, he's the type of guy that will give you the shirt off his back is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, literally. All right. We're bringing this back from the yeah. awkward uh, or, moment. Yeah. Or make you a piece of uh, pickup truck trim without a keyhole cut out in it. That's yeah. what he wanted. Yeah. yeah. So we, uh, so I get this molding and so we kind of get to talking about social media and the industry and kind of, because, you know, in the past, the guys in Oklahoma city, um, the guys around that, that were in the car scene there, you know, they knew Mark, they knew cause it's, it's, a, it's a big city. It's over a million people, but it's uh, the car community is tight knit. But, uh, and we sold to a lot of distributors, you know, brothers and, uh, LMC, LMC and and pretty and much all. everybody. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, but the end user didn't realize, like, basically they would see in the LMC catalog that you could buy a $250 set of molding or an $800 set of molding. Well, they didn't know the difference, you know? So what we tried to do and what I teamed up with David to do is just get it out there. I mean, get it out to the guy. I mean, you're in Arizona. We, you know, Yezzy's in Arizona. I'm talking to these guys that are in California and, and Iowa and all over the country that are going... Oh yeah, I, I bought that expensive molding. That stuff is killer. I won't buy the cheap stuff anymore. They didn't know it was us. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is just get it out there and go, hey, you've been buying this for years anyway. Just know it's from us. You know, know the quality. And, and we had a saying that uh, Mark A was the best kept secret in the classic truck industry. Yeah. Which yeah, is not so. good for business. That's yeah. not a good thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I agree. I mean, I, I, I'm I've always been drawn to it um, because of the like you said, you knew that it was quality and the craftsmanship, and then like I said, some of the the story. And when you really dive into it, that's why it's so important for us to tell the audience about that that history, not only where you've been, but where you're going. And that right. square body molding today, they unveiled SSO2 we, two, three hours ago, and that molding is on showcase. Now, Marque, you did a good job of posting it up. We talked about it on the podcast on the Sponsor Spotlight. I was able to talk to the guys uh, over at Square Body about the build and some of the trim. We brought it up on the episode, and January is going to be the rollout. Is that the plan? That's our plan, yeah, to start shipping in January. We're actually planning on starting taking orders today. Okay. So, so we're going to launch the uh, pre-sale today so people can go place their order. It doesn't matter if it's Suburban, Blazer, Short Bed, Long Bed. We're going to have all the versions of that trim. That's lots and lots of tools, which has taken us a long time to build. But we're uh, just about ready to go into production. So it would be January 1 ship dates, but pre-order uh, would be starting today. Which is great because get it in now, then you'll know for you guys, get things ramped up. I know there was some a lot going in on the tooling. One thing I want to hit, J.D., you And also real about, quick, just go, to, yeah, first in, first out. So whoever's orders first in, those are the first orders we're going to ship. Okay, cool, so, yeah. Because it's going to take us a while to fulfill all the orders. There's been huge demand. Uh, real quick, just a, a story. J.D. and I were out actually meeting with builders and talking to them about their builds, uh, just traveling the nation, and we came across a, uh, a square body build. And uh, do you remember this, J.D.? Which one? Which, which, which square body build? I think build? that was uh, Tray 5. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he had that trailer. Well, so what happened was we... Uh, no, I, I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to tell the okay, story. Okay, tell the story. <laughs> okay, so Trey Five, so Jeremy, they, Jeremy the audience yeah. is Jeremy. very familiar so with Jeremy. A, he's got a sweet square body, and he'd worked on everything, but... The but is this the, the Blazer, or which truck is no, this? No, no, this was a, this has been a couple of years ago. Oh, so they, oh, And yeah. it was just kind of a truck that was passing through his shop. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's a, it's a nice truck, though, and, and uh, had, a, had a cool... Was it... Uh, it's blue black. and white. Blue and white? Was yeah, it blue and white or black? He had a had black a... and gray one that he did that was in uh, Street Trucks in the C10 Builder's Guide. Yes, that's yep. it. It's yep. kind of a little bit lower buck yeah, type yeah, yeah. truck. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, cool vibe, though, you know, and he's a, Jeremy's a great guy, and so we're just, talk, yeah, just talking to if him. If you're listening, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to beat me up. Uh, big hey, I wear his T-shirt. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. uh, um, so anyway, we're looking at it, and the, the trim was just absolute crap ola i mean this trim look the truck looked good the truck looked great and the trim was just awful and so i said to jd i said you know what is the deal with this he says that's all there is that's the aftermarket trim that's there, there's for square bodies yeah that's yep. the only there's not another option you can either go new old stock which a lot of that doesn't match you know the anodizing is different or well, the colors and, and are different that is, i, I want to hit on it because is you talked about it jd is when a guy and joe yezzy probably has more square body nos stuff that is out there and you nailed it it's like you pay 
without the yin yang for it it's a lot it's not going to match and it's it's in different shapes from the different years and so on and so forth so so thinking nos is always right is not always right so yeah so he had bright you know all matching and bright uh uh, uh trim on the truck but uh it didn't look good at all it looked terrible and he started talking to us he said yeah when i when i just pushed this on it just mashed in and so it's got like places where it's pushed in. It's got places where the trim was bowed and wouldn't stay flush with the truck. It's got, you know, the, the curves on it were not bent right. And, you know, if you understand how we roll form and how we make this stuff, the tooling's quite elaborate. You have to be very careful with it. It's a delicate process. So that's that really started a process of JD, JD and I, you know, talking about it more. He's a huge fan of square bodies. And we just said, no, we would just want to make the very best square body trim in the world, period. And kind of a price is no object. We're going to do whatever it takes. We're going to make the best tooling in the world and make awesome square body molding. So wait, I got to I got to tell you something on this. This is this is this right here. If this doesn't tell you the dedication that Mark A has to building parts, I don't think anything else will. And Ronnie knows this. He's seen the truck. I had an extremely nice '77 green and white Chevy truck. Probably one of the nicest original trucks in the country. Original paint, original interior, trucks garage its whole life. Unbelievable. David comes to me and goes, uh, we got to have a, you know, we got to start building this molding if we're going to start tooling up, which a side note to this, uh, I don't know if you know this, but when you put four or five people for a year in charge of building in-house tooling, you can rack up several hundred thousand dollars real quick. So that's a side note that, uh, you know, this is not, this is not a, Hey guys, you want to build some trim? Okay, let's do it. I yeah. mean, this is a major endeavor. So it's not, it's not fly by night. It's matching the quality that we've all come to know. Right. right? So, come to know. so David, he, he calls me and he's like, uh, what's the best way to do this molding? And I go, man, because it doesn't match because you can get a, uh, you know, a front hockey stick fender piece that if it was made in a different plant than the other fender piece, they won't line up right. And whatever you're going to find, you're going to need to find a really, really nice truck with perfect trim that has no damage to it. And he goes, well, that's pretty cool because you have one of those trucks. And I was like, yeah, but man, I don't want to tear it apart. And you know, once you take the molding off, and you know, and and, and he's I'm thinking, like, you remember when I gave you my shirt off my back? Yeah, and but see, so I'm a very much like I'm a purist, you know. So uh, I'm like, man, he goes, well, then sell me the truck. I'm like, well, the truck's not for sale. He's like, yeah, sell me the truck. So long story short, um, he bought the truck. He bought the truck to take the molding off to copy it. Bought a whole truck, and it was not a cheap truck. So, uh, you know, that's just the level of commitment that these guys have. And, and you know, it doesn't matter what we're doing. I mean, that level of commitment carries through in everything. And we were talking earlier, and I'm getting off on a tangent here, but we were talking earlier about quality control. It's quality control across the board. I mean, it's quality control to the guys that are, you know, any other company. They, they throw it in the box, they wrap it up, they send it to you. Our, or Mark Hayes shipping guys catch more flaws and hey guys I, i'm sorry I, this has got a little small nick here we're not going to be able to ship this out we're, you know bring another one from the back um so you know that quality carries through w with everything and, and that's and that's kind of what i was hitting on a little bit earlier is uh that's why i came to work uh and help these guys you know is because it's easy to stand behind there's yeah. no excuses you know i'm not walking around here going Oh yeah, this you know these parts are great, but you know that there's there's a little problem here. This doesn't fit. You know I don't get the callbacks. Um, you know I don't I don't think that if it was a situation where I'm I'm going out here and, and talking to these guys that I know from all over the country about truck parts, if it's same like it's the same thing that that we that we you and I talk about all the time. You're not going to promote anything on C10 Talk that you don't trust, that you don't believe in, that you don't stand behind. Because it's too hard to try to explain to it when somebody comes up to you and goes, man, I tried that and it was junk. Yeah. Well, and especially at SEMA when you're walking around and you've got, uh, you know, a ton of trucks here that are all carrying not only your bedwood, your parts, your molding, and, and, and you know, it's, it's the proof is in the pudding. The builders use it. The advertisement is because they keep coming back. Give us a sense of idea uh, about this new trim, how many tools. Um, the other thing I really want to hit on, did you guys go through, for example, another, like the trim that was on Jeremy's truck? What's the gauge on something like that, and how does that compare to your new trim? So what we did is we looked at the OEM trim, and the OEM trim, in our estimation, was just barely thick enough. So it's, it's, it's actually still pretty delicate. The aftermarket trim is really thin. 
So that material is, is too thin. Well, it's thin for a reason. When you're doing, uh, when you're doing forming of material, the tooling is a lot lighter and easier if you have really thin material. So we decided that we would go from a, from a stress like is that that's kind of what I envision like the stress of making the turns and exactly. the thicker obviously it's more stress and and then I could see a ch tool being cheaper because it can be built cheaper because you're bending cheaper material exactly okay so in order to bend heavy thick material steel stainless steel uh, hardened aluminum uh, you have to have better tooling it's much more expensive. So we decided to go ahead and go with a thicker gauge aluminum. So the aluminum's thicker that we make the trim out of. The, alum the aluminum's also a better alloy, so it's a harder aluminum. And that is uh, better, for the, better for the trim in many ways, uh, but one of the real ways that comes out that you can see is it polishes up so nicely. So we triple polish the trim to where you can't see any marks, any mill lines, no work in the trim at all. Then we hard anodize that. So we send it out and have it hard anodized. That makes that finish a lifelong finish. You don't have to do anything to it. And then we bring it back in our shop and we paint the trim all with a, a special paint. So no tape, no, uh, no decals, it's all painted by hand. Um, and speaking of painting by hand, not only will we have the black, but we will have the 1977 gold trim, nice. which I don't think comes in any version except if you can find new old stock. Right. And um, nobody makes that. Yep, and 100%. And then you talk about the, the NOS, your, the color. It's going to, depending on yeah, where it was kept. the black is different. It's crazy. And, 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 uh, and a lot of guys, I know for a fact, they buy the, uh, the black and then they'll want to paint it and then they have to go through it. And now if you can just get it that way that it's already done, and then really because even though uh, in 77 it's the only available year per GM, if you can buy it, I know a lot of people would actually just want to have the yellow because it's yeah. really cool. It and they'll cool. be, oh, is it 77? Well, not really, but nonetheless, it does look really cool. It breaks it up. And uh, if you can get it, I know a lot of people that will put that on their vehicle just because they like it versus the black, something different. Right. Well, everybody's looking for something a little different. Yeah. GMCs, you know, are really popular. Wired GMCs is popular. I don't think it's because the grill looks better. I think it's because there's fewer of them out there, yeah. and so it gives you a, a little edge. Yeah. So yeah, the uh, the ochre is that the color? That the color? Okra. Yeah. It's, so yeah. okra, it, either way, Spanish gold okra. It's, it's kind of funny. Okra. Now I'm talking to the experts now. So no, yeah. yeah. These, well, what happened? It, it, we what can have a fist was, fight over what this paint color is. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with Spanish gold because it's okra, but that's fine. Because in sixty is uh, sixty seven to seventy two, it's okra. In seventy three, like Yellowstone. GM switched it. I think they got tired of the word okra, uh -huh. and it, it's a same color, you, different name. I'm gonna let you have this one only because I think you have more okra? yellow paint coverage, <laughs> more okra on than any other vehicle on the road. I do. So. And you know what's funny is I've had one, two. I've had a, I've had a suburban. My first truck ever was a okra and white '72. I've had a blazer and a suburban, and now Yellowstone all okra. I don't know how the hell I end up with that color, but man, I love I that color, and I don't like yellow, yeah, and I love that is, is one of my favorite colors because you never. Ever see it. And they switch that too. They switch that in um, 75, 76, you'll see a different yellow. And it's like, it's kind of more of a, they call it like a Wheatland yellow versus an, a Spanish gold. Mm. But Spanish gold is just a fancy way. Maybe the Spanish. Term to Wheatland yellow. Wheatland yeah, yellow. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the Spanish were eating the okra uh, for dinner and whatever. Yeah. But uh, we definitely digressed on that one. So. <laughs> well, call it what you want to call it. I spent many trips back and forth to the paint store with an original piece of 77 molding trying to match the paint. So mm -hmm. I actually had a 77 tailgate band, which has a lot more of the, the okra Spanish gold Wheatland on it. And uh, I went and took it, and we lasered it and matched it and messed with it. So, And then we went and compared those to a bunch of other new yeah. old stock pieces that uh, we Didn't could find match. all over the place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, different hues and how they were stored. So call it what you want to call it but it's whatever color you think it is for yeah. 77. <laughs> and as long as you want it, you can now get it. So let's talk about some of the tooling and the dies to make, uh, you know, like the hockey stick. And, and for me, when when I look at like the front fender of a square body, you look at those pieces, that's a lot of bend, you know, that's a ton of bend. But that's what makes a square body so cool is that you get that breakup in the two-tone, especially the front fender. The front fender piece is just amazing that the way that they were able to cycle and wrap that through. And I'm a big 67 to 72 guy, so, so I love a two-tone truck. But what GM did with that made uh, made somebody's life hell because they had a lot of work ahead of them to make that part. And the aftermarket stuff, I have aftermarket stuff on Yellowstone, and it's not that good. Well, you're fixing to have different aftermarket yeah, stuff on it's, Yellowstone. It's not you're good. coming up pretty and, quick. And uh, uh, Orange Slice, That's uh, I've got an original 76 that 
that you should see. I'll send you some pictures of the trim on this thing. It's been beat up, but it's all original. And Fantastic. It's, it's pretty rad. That so, sounds great. So that stuff is, is, is really, um, even, you know, the older it is, it's beat up. You want to get some new stuff. You want to get the right stuff. Tell us about the dies and what it took to make some of those pieces. Hey guys, I use precision replacement parts on my builds because I demand quality and I demand precision. If you want the best weather stripping, demand precision. PRP.com, it's that easy. PRP.com. Seriously, check this out. OEM design parts, it's easy to install and you have a lifetime warranty. Everything from windshield seals, rear window seals, door seals, roof rail seals, vent window seals, belt line molding, glass run channels, trunk seals, hood decal, you need it, they've got it. They also have their vent window refurbishing program. You send in your wing windows and they send them back and they're completely rebuilt, disassembled, sandblasted, painted, and they replace and install new weather stripping, new glass, and handles. Talk about quality, talk about precision, and that's why I use Precision Replacement Parts. PRP.com, and follow them on social media as well. Hey guys, did you know that U.S. Mags and American Racing Wheels have true lineage to one another? And that U.S. Mags was created in the mid-60s by none other than racing legend Parnelli Jones and his childhood friend, Art Hale Sr.? Well, fast forward around 50 years, and you'll see that Art's son, Art Hale Jr., who grew up in the wheel industry, obviously following in his dad's footsteps, acquired the name and the iconic American wheel brand. Talk about rad. Amazing history, amazing story, and amazing wheels. Check them out at us-mags.com. That's us dash mags.com how about their resto mod series you'll see their sierra and their scottsdale that's a classic rally style wheel so many different wheels so many different choices check them out us dash mags.com and let me know which one you like tell us about the dies and what it took to make some of those pieces i know it was a trial and error trial and tribulation style right. story so you know like we said we designed brand new tools from original you know we make our original drawings and design those tools um, it's extremely difficult these are progressive tools um, they bend a little bit and then bend a little bit more and bend a little bit more and these parts go through many different steps each one of those steps is a different tool um, we have progressive roll formers that flat material enters one end of the roll former and in each roll that it goes through it bends it a little more and a little more and a little more and by the time it comes out the end of the progressive roll former it's its final shape. Um, uh, we have stretch formers so you know the wrapping the trim around the rear um, end of the bed yeah. you've got to stretch form that so you actually grab that piece of trim and the tool holds it and holds the shape and then stretch forms that to that exact uh, that exact shape, that exact profile. If you do that any other way than stretch forming it, that springs back, or the trim ends up, you know, being the wrong length, or there, there's just lots of issues that the curve isn't quite right. Uh, but when you stretch form that, that curve is exactly right. That piece of trim sucks up against the sheet metal just right, is the right length. And it, you know, to me, a truck with great trim on it. I don't know, it's like uh, somebody said earlier today, they were looking at a square body and they didn't have any trim on it at all. And they said, that's like a face with no eyebrows on it. You're looking at it going, uh, there's something is it something wrong. I know here. that guy intended to make that truck like that and that he was going for a look, you know, but just that trim really, the trim is one of the most distinctive things about the square body. 100%. And it's kind of like uh, lingerie or lingerie, however you want to look at it. It's like, whoa, damn, that looks really good. And I think you get that contrast, and that's what's cool. And for the audience, if you haven't uh, played with trim much, I imagine that you've bent brake lines and or fuel lines. And it's you, certain things will not bend. If you bend it, it's going to crease it. And so to think about that end piece on the, you know, the top of the tailgate where it wraps around by the brake lights, I could see that just bending and, and putting a crease in it. And once you crease it, you don't yeah, uncrease something. There yeah. is, is you, there's no way you can uncrease that. So as that goes, you guys have you know made all this tooling. You're ramping everything up. You're ready. You're launching it. It's available. They can order it now. And I'll tell you one more thing about this, Ronnie. We were talking about that, that tailgate piece, uh, creasing or that piece that runs around by the tailgate above the taillight. And uh, 
<clears throat> I did a little 77 blazer, didn't have trim on it, wanted to add the trim. This is several years ago. And uh, I got some stuff shipped to me for, from, uh, from another manufacturer. And uh, it, they literally hung that 90 degree portion out of the tube. And by the time I got it, it was bent over flat. So I had them send me another one. They were bent over flat. And that's one of the things with us you're not gonna have to worry about because man, the packaging is unreal. We put so much, so much emphasis on packing for that reason. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's the most important thing to just realize. Like you go back to the customer service perspective, the start, the finish, the product. Um, you guys are building the legacy of it or continuing the legacy of Mark and the company, and um, and it doesn't stop there. I mean, it, you, you look at like you said, we had one piece of bed wood come back. Um, it's exciting times. The C10 community, the C10 nation, the C10 popularity is continuing to grow. Square Buddy trucks are on fire. C10s are on fire. If you're going to work on your 60 to 66, your 66, your 67 to 72, your 67 to 72, your square body now, you can get that molding. You can get those eyebrows. You can get that lingerie, and you can make it the way you want. Because a lot of guys, you guys might be getting the product. You might be getting a truck that, uh, for example, is in raw form and you're matching up, you know, different paint and so on and so forth. Well, once you get that truck to where you want it and you spend that money on, on paint, you spend how much money on paint? Let's say somehow somewhere, you know, somebody and you get a $5,000 paint job. Well, honestly, it's probably gonna be 10,000, but let's just say $5,000 paint job. You want to hey, put the right finding, trim if on. If you're finding high quality five thousand dollar paint jobs, I'm sending my trucks to Arizona. One thing I did not say high quality, but somebody <laughs> is gonna, somebody's got a five. They got a buddy. They're gonna do it in the garage. They want two stage, three stage. They want the hardener. They want the right paint. They're gonna go through it. They're gonna wet sand it. No labor. Their buddies all owe them whatever. The bottom line is is build the truck you want to build it. But if you're gonna put trim and you're gonna put uh, bed wood on that on that uh, build, then there's really no other place to look than Marque. That's it. Well, That's really it. Save yourself the time and the heartache. You know, I, I hear about it all the time, man. These guys, they call in, and uh, or they'll, they'll talk to me, guys I know. And uh, so to give the audience kind of an idea, you know, we talk about these trucks being progressive, right? So everybody was doing the, the 60 to 66, and then kind of went to the 67 to 72, and now they're moving to the 73 and 80, and uh, even up to the 88s and 98s. So if you've ever bought a set of our 67 and 68 or 69 to 72 molding, the square body molding is the same gauge. So that'll give you an idea, um, cause you know how thick yeah. our, our molding is on those trucks. We use that, that same gauge on the uh, square body and which is almost double the thickness of factory. And I don't even know how many times the thickness of aftermarket, but um, you know, that that's exactly right. I have guys that call me all the time and they go, man, I love your molding, but it's, you know, three, four, five times the price of the, of the, of the com competition. And I'm like, man, you spend $6,000 on a set of wheels because, you know, you, you understand the quality. You spend 20 grand on a paint job because you understand the quality. You spend, you know, 20 grand, 15 grand, 10 grand, whatever on an interior because you understand the quality. You'll buy it. You know, there's two different kinds of bumpers. You can buy the cheaper chrome bumpers or you can buy the nicer chrome bumpers. And you'll buy the nicer chrome bumpers. And you're going to finish it off with a $200 set of molding? Yeah. I, I don't well, it is it. one thing that I think the, the perspective will change, especially now that you guys offer this. And we really want to, you know, help in you pushing this out to the world. Um, that's that's we're, we're honored to do that. Will this be for 73 to 80 and then the next phase for the 81 to 87? Or is this going to be all 73 all the way up? Because probably what we're going to do right now. Pretty different. Right. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to offer the 73 to 80. Okay. And then I got a lot of guys asking me about the dually parts. So the nice thing is with us building stuff in house, if you need the standard style trim, we can do it in any length you want. Uh, but we're gonna have to tool up to do the dually bedside pieces. Yeah, the fender pieces. Yep. So you think you'll make a front fender piece for that? You'll make the molding that wraps and comes back around at some point. So you're okay. asking kind of where we're going, what's yeah. next? Um, so once we kind of get that, we get rolling on the on the complete 73 to 80 kits. Um, probably our next step is going to be to do some of the dually stuff, only because we've had a ton of requests for that. 
your your number one main man, Big Fish, was yeah. asking me about oh, that yeah. today when we're going to come out with that. Yeah, just earlier, talking about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, well and that that front that fender, that front of that fender has t- taken a beating for a long time on a dually, yeah. right? And it's a gorgeous piece. It's a gorgeous piece. I love that piece, yeah. but I could see that being a big deal and a big big undertaking. So uh, they're giving us the the wrapping it up thing. Anything else you want to hit, and we'll uh, we'll take it out. I'll tell you one last story, and uh, you know we could talk all day. So. Uh, we uh, we were talking to Big Fish earlier. You know that guy. He's got. He said I think he has eighty plus sweat trucks. He has at least eighty. So we were talking wow. to him, and uh, he looked at Yezzy's truck, walked around it, looked at it. I handed him a sample. He looked at it. He goes, "Sign me up. I'll take a set." He said, "Send me just, a set right now." Yeah, just like that. He wants yeah. the first set, and it's because it's like I told David. These are the guys. These are the icons in the square body world, and they're seeing this stuff, and they're going. No question, I'll take it. Oh, without a doubt. As soon as you guys, when I was there, I came up upon you. I touched that piece. I felt that piece. Uh, I'm telling you guys, C10 Nation, I'm not just BSing you. I swear to God, this piece, it, it, it was three inches by one inch. Well, right? it's, a, it's an actual piece. It's, yeah. the, it's the cab oh, piece yeah. that goes by the door. For, yeah. it, it, and that thing was so th- just the, the integrity that it provided. So if you don't know who Big Fish is, uh, just for your own entertainment, uh, follow Big Fish at Big Fish Garage. The guy has literally over 80 squares. He's a, a square fanatic from Blazers to Dooley's to everything. Um, David. Finally, to, to meet you, it's it's been a pleasure. Ronnie, JD, it's good to meet you. Thanks for coming down and sitting down with us in the C10 Nation and Magnaflow. As always, thank you for taking the time, C10 Nation, to listen to the pod, and uh, we'll keep you up. SEMA 2018. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. www.mar-k.com. Go see us.